welcome to Richwood United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Steve Herman, and this is the first Sunday in the season of Advent. Join with us in a hymn of Advent season. spend some time in prayer and as we go to prayer we do have some families in the life of the church who have lost loved ones recently we want to lift them up in their grief and loss we also want to continue to remember all of those pandemic related issues that we're all going through and uh, we want to continue to pray uh, for our troubled world uh, that the Prince of Peace would come and bring peace to us even in this Advent season let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this season of Advent, the first season of the Christian year, a season of new beginnings, a new adventure begins. And boy, most of us are going to be glad to turn the page on 2020 and to look forward to better things. We pray your blessing of comfort on those who grieve. We pray, pray your blessing of healing on those who are sick and ill. We pray your blessing of hope upon those of us who uh, may be isolated and in despair uh, due to this pandemic. Just continue to bring your blessings to your people here, there, and everywhere in this season of Advent. We pray in the name of Christ who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we're delighted to have special music by Danny and Lucy today. Shepherds awake to the news of great joy. 
Well, lots going on in the life of the church. I want to thank so many people who have been working so hard on various items in the life of the church. Um, thank everybody who baked pies and bought pies over the Thanksgiving break. Uh, delicious apple pies and uh, donated uh, by our local farmer. Thank you, Carl, for that. Uh, pumpkin pies, custard, uh, coconut cream pies as well. So thanks everybody who worked so hard and supported that. Also, uh, uh, Mildred and the youth group working on gray blankets. Thank you all who ordered those, a record amount of those ordered. And don't forget to pick them up this week. Also, thank you all those who have been mission-minded. Uh, you brought in, Carol uh, told us about the need for the homeless in Camden, blankets and coats. Your response was overwhelming. And in fact, uh, she has plenty to last for several weeks now. So uh, we don't need to bring any more right now. Thanks for your response to Kids Alley. Thanks for your response for Peter's Pantry. And you know, we sent almost 200 shoe boxes out, 187 shoe boxes. So what an incredibly generous people you are. So God bless you for your generosity. And you continue to support the church. I'm amazed at how many people who uh, we haven't seen during the pandemic, maybe you're old or maybe you're high risk. And yet, uh, Week after week, month after month, your offering continues to come in the mail. P.O. Box 7, Richwood, 08074. Thank you for that. Keeps the church uh, bills paid and uh, the ministry going. And then some still use the, the link to the website, the link found on the website, uh, in which you can use your credit cards. So thank you so much for your faithfulness. We're going to listen to scripture this time. And Marissa's going to read for us. Good morning. Today I'm reading from Isaiah 40 verses 1 through 5. It's titled Comfort for God's People. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Thank you. Thanks, Marissa. Well, it is the Advent season, as I said, and, you know, we are going to uh, talk about songs of the season this year, songs of the season. And we're going to follow those themes of Advent that are so common to you, the themes that we light candles for, the themes of hope, love, joy, and peace. So today we lit the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope. We're going to talk about songs of hope. Uh, this this season and when we light this candle of hope we read familiar verses uh, maybe you remember that verse the people who walked in darkness have beheld a great light and this morning Marissa read uh, a verses from Isaiah that come from the exile and we talk about the people of Israel who are exiled from their homeland and how they are living in darkness and how they're longing for the light of God and for the Messiah. And some years, it's hard for us to relate to the despair of those texts because they're texts about hope in a time of hopelessness. And we are usually people around this time of year who have everything we could hope for and more because we live in a land of abundance. And so it's hard sometimes to relate to those texts. But this year is different, isn't it? Um, this year, in a sense, we are all in exile, like the children of Israel, from our normal life. Maybe you just spent Thanksgiving all alone. I know it wasn't the Thanksgiving we usually have, and I'm sure it wasn't the Thanksgiving you usually have. And so, it's a little easier to relate to these texts this year that talked about being uh, exiled from our normal life. So let's pray as we go before the Lord and we look at these uh, 
words of hope that come to us today. Let's pray. Lord, we are all tired of bad news. We are all tired of isolation. And we pray uh, that you will speak to us words of hope today through these scriptures and through these songs as you spoke hope to ancient Israel when they were in exile so many years ago. And we ask this blessing in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. So Marissa read that passage of scripture from Isaiah chapter 40. And listen to it again. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The Lord is telling Isaiah, look, the people have had enough words of judgment, they've had enough words of condemnation, they've had enough suffering, they've had enough hardship. Speak words of comfort to them, words of hope, words of compassion. For many of them, the exile seemed as if it was a punishment for sin. And the Lord says, tell them they've suffered double for their sins. And then it's now time to focus on hope and restoration. We all need a word of hope, don't we? We need a word of encouragement. As I said in prayer, we've all, uh, we're tired of, of bad news, aren't we? And we need good news from God. Isaiah goes on. The voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley must be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Well, you say, what is Isaiah talking about? What is the word of hope and comfort here? Well, the imagery is that of a king coming for a royal visitation. And when a king came to a city for a royal visitation, that was the biggest thing that ever happened in your lifetime. Kings came with entourage. Kings came with chariots. Kings came with carts. Kings came with um, goods. And you couldn't bring those things on a rocky old path. You needed a smooth road. And so this is really a verse that's about a road project. It's about filling in the valleys and making the highway smooth, lowering the plains so that there can be a smooth, flat road so that carts and chariots and horses and the king and the king's entourage can come in. Prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Get ready, the king is coming to visit us. Now, John the Baptist picked up on those very words of Isaiah hundreds of years later and quoted them. He said, prepare the way of the Lord, the king of salvation is coming. And John the Baptist was the last Old Testament prophet, really, and he's the one who lived to see the birth of the Messiah, Christ. And he kind of personalized those verses and said, this verse of Isaiah about the king coming to visit you, that king is Jesus Christ. And those verses about a road project to enter the city, that's about preparing your heart for the Lord to come into your heart. And that's why he talked about the changes you need to make in your heart and in your life. And he talked about repentance, which is a word that means to change or to turn. And so John the Baptist heralded the coming of Jesus Christ as a word of great hope. So this was the word of hope that John the Baptist brought. And we sing uh, songs of hope on this first Sunday of Advent. We sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Listen to the words again, and listen for the hope in those words. Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and what? Consolation. Hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. 
Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. Remember, we're making way for the king. Born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts above. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. So the Messiah, the hope of Israel, is also our hope and for deliverance from sin in Jesus Christ. Now hope just isn't a theme of Advent. Hope is a theme that runs throughout the entire scripture. It's a, it's a Christian theme. And one of the great verses and passages about hope is in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And I want to read it to you, and we'll begin with the old King James Version because it might be familiar to you. We glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Now let's modernize that a little bit and listen to it in the New American Standard uh, Bible. And not only this, but we also celebrate our tribulations. We're going through quite a tribulation now, aren't we? Knowing that tribulation brings perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope, and hope does not disappoint. That's a key phrase, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit given unto us. And then let's really modernize it. Listen to that same passage in the Living Bible. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. They help us to learn to be patient, and patience develops strength of character in us and helps us trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Is that what we're getting? Strong and steady, hope and faith? Then, when that happens, we're able to hold our heads high no matter what happens and know that all is well. For we know how dearly God loves us and we feel the warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. So can you hold your head high? Can you sense that God loves us? Mm. This pandemic is certainly a time of tribulation, and the scripture tells us it's also then a time for great hope, because we have this faith that enables us to be patient, and to persevere, and to be stronger in the midst of our trials. And as we read in the scripture, hope does not disappoint. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, who will not disappoint us. The closing song that we're going to sing today is a song about hope as well. Um, another traditional song of Advent, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And it's actually a prayer for the Messiah to come, who's referred to as Emmanuel, which literally, you know, means God with us. So we've been in exile, we feel as if we're God forsaken, but we're praying for God to be with us and to come and be with us. And it goes through the history of Israel. And let me just uh, read a few of these verses so that when you sing the hymn, you'll realize uh, what it's talking about. The first verse looks back to that exile period again. O come, O come, O Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Buy us out of captivity that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. The third verse looks back to the time when God gave the law on Mount Sinai after delivering the children of Israel from 400 years of slavery. You see it's saying this is the same God that met Moses on Mount Sinai is the Messiah who's going to come and deliver you. And it says, O come, O come, great Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the law in clouds of majesty and awe. And then the fourth and fifth verse look to the Messiah who would come from the lineage of King David, Jesse's son David. O come, O branch of Jesse's stem, unto your own and rescue them. From depths of hell your people save and give them victory 
or the grave. O come, O key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe for us the heavenward road and bar the way to death's abode. And then the sixth and seventh verse make reference to Jesus as the bright and morning star and also reference to that star that would guide the Magi to come and worship Jesus. O come, O bright and morning star, and bring us comfort from afar. Dispel the shadows of night and turn our darkness into light. O come, O king of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid all our sad divisions cease, and be yourself our king of peace. What a wonderful song, and how full of hope it is. And so as we sing these verses today, um, realize that ultimately it's saying that the God who did all of these things for Israel came in the form of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, and who delivers us from sin and death. And so we live in that hope in this Advent season that sin and death do not have the final word, that life and light have the final word. Let us pray. Lord, we lit a candle of hope today, and I pray that through the songs of hope that we sing and through the message of your word, hope will be lit in each and every one of our hearts, even in the midst of this despair, uh, isolation, pandemic, all we're going through. Fill us with your hope, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing not all of those verses, but a few of those verses of that closing hymn. today, Jake, and the blessings of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you in this Advent season, and always. Amen.